did we have left to do on here? Eight, nine, and ten. Yes. Is that right, Walker? Yes. Okay. Walker, I'm gonna let you choose a number. You want to do eight, nine, or ten? Uh, let's do ten. You want to do ten? Okay. Do you want to tell me? Do you want to do U substitution? Yeah. You want to tell me what you want U to be? Are you able to take the derivative of that, or do you need a hint? Um, I think I can. So it would be... It would be... Negative 15 s squared sine 5xt. You said sine, right? Yeah. Okay. That's very good. That's really good. It makes me feel really good when you do that. Because, you know, last year, when I first started this stuff, it just scares the bejesus out of me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Dale, remember that. So what would you do now? Okay, so do you look at this? Yeah, and then you see the, yeah, I see the 22x squared sign. So you want me to pull the 22 out front? Yeah. Okay. You want me to do anything with this here? Um, no. You want me to just leave it like that? So down here, you want the 22 here, correct? What else do you want me to do, anything? So you put the negative 15 on the 22. Where do you want the negative 15? So 22 over negative 15, so you have a So they cancel out. Well, okay, I think you need to do this. And maybe you said this. Oh, I forgot that. And you have that part right here, correct? I'm going to underline it. Yeah. And so, what do you want me to do with this? Um, multiply by negative 15. I think, I think, because you're going to have du over here, right? And this represents everything that I underlined. That's what that re represents, correct? So I could do this, make it a constant like that. All right. Okay. So now the 22 is here. The negative 1 over 15 du is here, right? And also the x squared 5x cubed is part of that. So what do I have left in here? That's a terrible integral. Is it it's just e to the u? E to the u. So, it's, so that's, it gets real simplified, doesn't it? Okay. So what's your final answer here then? What's the antiderivative of e to the u? It's e to the u. E to the u, okay. So you, should we just go ahead and substitute right away? Are you okay with that? I mean, look how messed up that looks. And also, you write it like this, and you know, you just gotta figure out how you want your constant, right? So you get to pick somebody. Brant? Brant? Eight or nine? Probably eight. Are you leaving nine for Ethan, or are you gonna pick somebody else to do nine? Since you suggested it, we'll probably have to do Ethan. Okay. Uh, what do you, you want me to rewrite this anyway to help you out? Um, yeah, it wouldn't help me, but I don't okay. really know. I, I know. always rewrite this, this uh, cosine, I write it like this, because sometimes it's easier to see what I want you to be. Are you okay with that form? Yeah. 
Can you see what you what you want you to be? That coincide with the two eyes. Right. Perfect. And I think it's harder to see it that way. I, I don't know if I'm right or not, but I would agree. Are you able to take that derivative? Uh, negative two sine of two x. This is what you said, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's almost what we got here, right? Okay, we're getting there. The only thing we got problem with is that little negative sign, right? Yeah. So I can write this as a negative du is equal to 2 sine of 2x. Mm -hmm. So are you okay that the negative goes out in front of the integral? Yeah. And here's du, right? So if you, I'll let you get caught up. So this is this. Yep. Okay. So what's in here then? U to the what power? Square. Yeah. And so what's the antiderivative of that? Um, one third U to the third. Right, can I make it negative one yeah. third? Yeah, And then can I get rid of the U and just substitute it right away? Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And my guess is if you looked at the answer key, that three would between be between the S and the parentheses. But I just think that's weird math notation. But some math god decreed it to be so, and so it is. They never asked me my opinion. I'd be willing to give it to them. I think it's dumb. It's the only function we do that with. We don't do it with any other function, except for the true function. Really? What makes them so special? All right, Ethan, you got this one. It's an icky one. What do you think? You will inscribe the x to the third plus. Yeah, very good. I'm quite quite impressed. I don't think anybody should do that. Well, I wasn't allowed to let Alex do that. Yeah, I'll shift it over so you can see it. Is that better? Is that better? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I asked that you would. I'll tell them right now. No, I have not. Yeah, let's, let's not get an issue. Okay. Um, I, you know what? You're going to have lunch here. I'll, I can give you the lesson plan and I'll give you the seating chart. Does that work? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, bye. So, Alicia, are you in College Point? Yeah. Anybody else in College Point? So, you guys know where it is in the maze room? That's where you guys are going to be tomorrow. Oh, like during this time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, are we oh. going to leave everybody? Well, you're going to show, you're going to go on the field trip. Okay. Oh, field trip? Yeah. Wait, can we make sure get here for this <laughs> way then? Go yeah, you can. Okay, make sure you guys dress up both, both of you. Right? That used to be my room in this building when I first built. I like this room. I do too. So, over, you can look outside, it's pretty outside. Here, you look and you see a brick building. Right, if I was you, I would have been. <laughs>
Yeah, but you do every so once in a while see uh, Mr. Schmitz out there with his class that surprises you about other things. Yeah. You ever take Spanish? Okay, back to Ethan. Sorry. Ethan, this was correct. Okay? Now, here's the hard part. Do you know what the derivative of that baby is? Okay, do you know what the derivative of this is? Close. You, you don't. Do you know what the derivative of this is? Either way. Okay. It's also. I could write it like this. Oh, yeah. I could also write it like that. Correct. Yeah. Because this is one. That's a hint. So what's the derivative of this? I want a five times five to the n. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So now we're going to go back to that one. Where do I put it? So what are you going to write here? I don't want no five, five to the n. Will you say it again? Oh, five. The ln of what? Um, five. Five times? Five to the x. Five to the what? X to the third. Plus seven, right? Yeah. Times, this is where we apply the chain rule of this baby right here. Three x squared. Now, it's tough, Ethan. Okay, you, Brant. I set Brant up, but Brant, give me of this. He's kind of mean. Okay, yeah. but if you look here, do you see how you have five x cubed plus seven, and here you have five x cubed plus seven? Yeah. So this kind of matches up, right? Yeah. And you have an x squared here, and you have an x squared here. Okay. The only thing you don't have is the four, but we can fix that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to help you out here is I'm going to say I'm going to have one over. I'm going to have the natural log of five because I don't need that, and I have a three because I don't need that. And here's du, and I have five x to the third plus seven times x squared dx. Okay, so the four is gonna go out front here. That's here. Yeah. And then what I'm underlining right here is right here, correct? Yeah. So here's my du, but I also need to have this, correct? So that's going to be in my denominator. Okay. Okay, like I said, it's a tough one. What's left? Because the, this is all gone, right? Yeah. Secant squared over here. Okay. Now, here's the other thing. Do you know what the antiderivative of secant squared is? Because I haven't reviewed it yet. Tangent? Yeah. So you got the tangent of u, you've got this. I'm going to write the 3 in front because it just seems weird. Plus c, I forgot my u. So it's going to be 4 over 3, natural log of 5, tangent of 5x to the third plus 7. Eraser. I got an eraser. I, you know what, sir? It's almost like I want to make mistakes now. I understand. You really got me to see the light of these erasers. Plus C. And I'm gonna put ten. Okay, Ethan. Yeah. Okay. And I gave you this. Am I right? Ready, Alexis? That's all I'll do. Number one, what's the antiderivative of sine? Cosine plus C. Negative cosine plus C. Okay. Lucy, antiderivative of cosine. Uh, sine plus C. Okay. Negative cosine plus C. Should we 
should skip this one because the other one. one no, I think we should skip this one. All right, Sierra, what's the antiderivative of this? You know this one? Right, yeah, negative cotangent. How do you know that? Just because you know everything? Do you have a way to, to remember? Okay, I agree with you. I know this one, okay? The way I know this one is you have these things called co-functions. Do they ever tell you the relationship between sine and cosine and tangent and cotangent, why they're called, one's called co and the other one's not? Do they ever tell you that? No. Co comes from complementary. So the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the cotangent of 60 degrees because 30 and 60 degrees are complementary angles. And so the sine of 30 degrees is the same as the sine of, oh, excuse me, the cosine of 60 degrees. So they're called co-functions. Well, <coughs> that, it's helpful in calculus because if you know that there is a relation, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, then the derivative of cotangent has got to be cosecant. The only hiccup is because it's negative. But you also have that issue with sine and cosine, right? Okay, and so that's how I'm that's how I put it together. Okay? It's I'm not very good at memorizing, but I know that relationship of co-functions. You know, I understand complementary angles. Okay, so it kind of goes back like that. Is that secant squared plus two? It's what? Just secant. It's just secant? Yeah, just secant. Negative cosecant. Negative cosecant. My guess is somewhere you've got some notes that might exist on these two. And I have a whole sheet of all the integrals you're going to need to know. I just print them off. But I'm not going to give you them until we are done going through uh, integration by parts and integration by partial fractions and and improper intervals. Okay. Alrighty. Ethan, do you remember this one? The secant squared. No. That's what the derivative is, the antiderivative. And I'm going to tell you this one, Ethan. I never ever remember this until I start teaching calc again. If you ask me in July, I won't know. But this is what I'll do if you ask me in July. I'll go if it's I'll find a place I can write in the dirt. And I'll write this. That's the first thing I'll write in the dirt. Is that helpful? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it what do you think is included? Where am I trying to lead you with this integration? Take the integral of sine of x and cosine. I'm going to give you one more hint. Okay. Get ready. Now I don't have this when I'm right in the dirt, okay? I do that just because it annoys Kirsch, and he'll yell at me very much. Why would when I walk too much? Okay, what is that signaling? Take the LM. It's an LM, okay? Now, that means it's the LM, but its derivative has to exist on top. Okay, right? Yeah. Right, because that's a derivative. Yeah. Is the derivative of cosine sine? No. No, the answer is no. It has to be what? So I'm going to put the negative here, I'm going to put the negative here. Because that's still positive, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have the negative natural log of cosine of x plus c. And if you ask me that in July, I won't know it. Guaranteed. Okay? 
Am I right, Walker? Is it the Alan Sarnada LC? Yeah. So, in your mind, you put cosine over sine and did this over here, and you don't have to change it, correct? Yeah. Do you know this one? This one you gotta have memorized because I can't remember it either. It's natural log of something. Do you have that sheet in front of you? Do you know what it is, Matthew? Natural log of something. I'm gonna come back to this one. What about this one, Brant? Are you stuck? I don't even know what I'm looking at yet. Oh, okay. It's number three. I, I'm looking at it. I'm not sure what to do. Okay. When I'm not sure which happens, okay, I do U substitution. What are you going to do U substitution for? Again, I look for parentheses. Probably. Okay. And the derivative of that is what? Um, it's 3x squared. Okay. So you look over here and you go, oh, I got an x squared. Yep. So that should give you a little bit of comfort, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So would you write 1 third du is equal to x squared dx? Yep. Okay, so now we're going to come back here. And do you see where I get 5 thirds in front of my integral? Yep. Do you see where I get the tangent of u du? Yeah. Are you a little less confused? Yeah, that makes sense. Because now you can come up here and use this baby, right? Okay. So what do you want me to write here? Um, 5 over 3. Okay. Yeah, which is what? Um, x cubed plus 1. And I probably should put, because cosine can be negative, I better put the absolute values in there. Okay. And literally, when I say every any time I get stuck, I do U substitution, you will see me do that every single time. And I look for some parentheses. Okay? All right. Alexis. We're gonna have to skip this one. You know why? Why? Because we're gonna need to know this one. Oh yeah. And I haven't done this one yet. Okay, so come back. And so probably on Thursday, come back Thursday. <coughs> Alrighty. How about this one? Let me know if you need a hint. So you want me to write du dx equals 2x? Yeah. And do you want me to write, because uh, there's no 2, you want me to write 1 half du equals x dx? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I got an x dx. So do you want me to write a 1 half out front? Yeah. And then write a fractional bar? A du like that? Yeah. What do you want me to write now? Okay, is that a good sign? Yeah. Okay. So do you think you know the answer? Yeah. 
Okay, can I get rid of you right away? Yes, you can record your absolute value. Okay, I'll put in absolute value. So you, do you want the one half up front? You could write it as the ln square root of x squared minus 4, and then you wouldn't need the absolute value. You know that? Yeah. Okay. Plus? You want, you want me to give you a hint? One of those answers is correct. Okay, well that's okay, now let, let me give you a hint. Okay, let me give you a hint. Okay. The easiest would be the ln of x, correct? Mm -hmm. What's the derivative of the ln of x? <coughs> is one over x in here? Yes. Yes, it is, isn't it? So it looks like we should do that then. So, u equals ln of x, and you already told me that du dx is equal to 1 over x, and so uh, du is equal to 1 over x dx, correct? Are you okay that I put the 5 out front? Yeah. Are you okay that I put this? Are you okay that I put this? What's left? Just Where is one the over one over u? Okay, very good. Okay, do you know the antiderivative of one over u? Log of u, right? Now you're going to replace u with what? The natural log of x. Correct. Okay, so you got the natural log of the natural log of x. That's like a calculus teacher being mean. And what they do is when they're isolated, they're chuckling. We think the natural log of the natural log of x is we're we're a sad bunch walker. i you know this is kind of confessional time for me, right? Already, Sarah. So you want me to do the same thing? Can I just write that du yeah, sure. is equal to one over x dx? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then pull out a one fourth. Um, then u to the two thirds. Very good. Because that's what squared and then two thirds. Yep. That's exactly because your index is 3 and yeah. you're squaring it. Perfect. Yeah. And then put the du, and that takes care of the 1 over x and yep. the dx. And then integrate it. Um, hmm. All right. Um, so it would be 1 fourth times 3 over 5 u to the 5 thirds plus 2. Okay, this is 5 thirds. I added it. So you have three twentieths parentheses, right? Yeah. Five thirds here plus c. And you get the ln of x. Have you given up on whiteout and gone with an eraser? Yeah. <laughs> you have, haven't you? No. Oh. Just, I still have the whiteout book. Um, okay.
So when we reverse the power rule, we add one to the exponent, yeah. and then we divide by that value or multiply by its reciprocal. It's all one to one difference. Right, right behind, uh, no, that's the derivative. So maybe down, down. It's in the video. Part one. Part one A. Part one A of all the videos I have to watch. Yeah, this is yesterday's video. All right, Nisha, what kind of integral is this? You know the name of it? Definite integral, right? Okay. Walker, it has what? Patent boots. Okay. What are you going to do here? And there's a reason I brought this problem up. Because this is a very common uh, multiple choice question. So I'll show you in a bit. I want you to do U substitution. Okay. I, I, you know, it's probably one that could do pattern recognition, but there's a reason I want you to do U substitution. So what is U? So uh, du dx is equal to what? 2x. 2x. So you're going to have 1 half du is equal to x dx, correct? Okay, now, you're going to have the 1 half up front. Notice I did not put hats and boots here, walker, okay? I'm going to wait with that because I'm going to ask Alicia, a question. Uh, okay. And you're going to have u to the third power, right? And then you're going to have du. Okay? So the multiple choice question you'll get is you'll get something that's in this form. And say, okay, using u substitution, which of these integrals is correct? Is there a 0 and a 1 right here? And go for A and B. No. Because 0 and 1 are X values. Does everybody understand that? They're X values. And I got to change them to U values. So you're going to put the 0 in for X here. And instead of 0, you're going to use the U value of 1. And you're going to put 1 into X here. And instead of the x value of 1, you're going to use the u value of 2. OK? So these are now in terms of you also using with the substitution. So then you're going to get u to what power? 4. And what's your coefficient out here going to be? 1a. And you're going to evaluate it from 1 to 2, correct? And you're going to have 1 eighth times what is 2 to the second power. Yeah, or 2 to the fourth power. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said second. I screwed you up. What? 16 minus 1 eighth, correct? So this is 2 minus an eighth, would you agree? Which is one and seven eighths. You want to leave it like that? You want the decimal representation? Because in Kruger right. welding, we'd have to know what the decimal seven eighths were, and seven sixteenths, and seven thirty seconds, and seven sixty fourths. That's as far as we. We were only after it to a sixty fourth of an inch. Well, some of us were. Some of us were like way off. I won't tell you who that person. Backside. So here are the trig inverse forms. These are the only three you need to know because cosine is just negative, arc cosine, and arc cotangent is just negative, and cosecant is just arc cosecant is just negative. So these are the two popular ones. Arc 
I hardly ever see this, but since it's in BC, it could possibly happen. So the question is, and what I did is I put these three in this particular form. So I rewrite this. I first write it in this form. I know I could use U substitution here and this is a derivative, but I would need a negative 2x in here, correct? Would everybody agree with that? Because a negative 2x is the derivative of a negative x squared. And the negative 2 we could deal with, but we can't just arbitrarily in put an x in there because then I'd have to divide by an x and then got really messy. So when I see that, I automatically know that this is going to be arc sign because the derivative of what's in parentheses isn't there. Now I didn't have to write it like that. I could have said, hey, a negative 2x doesn't exist here. More importantly, an x doesn't exist outside of there. So what I have to identify is that a is equal to 2 because this is a squared and my function u is x. And the derivative of x is 1, which is right here. So that means my answer is going to be arc sine, or you could use sine inverse. That's probably the most popular way of u, which is x, over a, which is 2 plus c. Now, a quick check is to do this. If you remember last year, I have y, it is, um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, correct? And this would be 4 minus x squared, right that length. Lo and behold, I have 4 minus x squared, the square root of it. So that's a quick little check I do to make sure I'm headed in the right direction. Got a question. Pardon? I didn't do substitution here. What I really meant to say, and this is just using these notes, what I mean by you is that there's some function inside here that's being squared for g of x. And g prime or du if this is u, then this is du, and that would be 1. Okay? Now, if you take a look and compare it here, I have an x here, don't I? So I could do u substitution, say, hey, I got 4 minus x squared, take the derivative of that, get negative, uh, get du dx is equal to a negative 2x, a negative 1 half du is equal to x dx, which is this right here. And so I'm going to have a negative 1 half integrate 1 over u to the 1 half power du. So that's the same as a negative 1 half u to the negative 1 half power du. So I'm going to add 1 to here, that's going to give me a half. Multiply it by its reciprocal, which is 2. I still have that negative 1 half. Here I have my plus c. So now I have a negative square root of 4 minus x squared plus c. Did I go through that too fast? I did, didn't I? Okay, so let me back up. How did I know that these were different? I see an x here. And so I'm thinking, oh, I could do u substitution. Here's my parentheses, that square root, because I, you know, I could have written it like this. So I let that be u. I took the derivative, 
I get x dx, which is this. So a negative 1 half du replaces that x dx. I replace u, which is u to the 1 half power, which is the same as u to the negative 1 half power. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I just reverse the power rule, and then I just put it in my square root form. And the reason I knew to do that is because there was that variable here. So notice I have the variable here, I don't have it here. So what does that mean? That means this is arc tangent. I could even do this, but I'm not gonna hit that because if this were natural log, I would need an 18x up there. I'd need that if it's natural log and it's not there. Yes, ma'am. How would be a four under the It's a negative one. Yeah. So, Did you just answer your question? No. <laughs> I guess I didn't quite, I can't quite hear your question. When you uh, work out the equation like of negative one half times two you just like under the square root it should be negative one. This right here? Yeah. Oh, if I took the derivative, how I didn't, how I don't get this? No. <laughs> how it goes from the last, the second to last step to the last step. You just equal the four minus x two. Oh, you just plug it in. Plug it in. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm just replacing you with what I said I identified it as. So when I have this case, I know this is our tangent. So I'm going to rewrite it so it looks like this. So this is really the square root of 2 squared. This is really 3x squared dx. So again, this is a derivative and I'm saying that gx is equal to 3x. So that derivative has to be 3. So I need a 3 here. And to compensate that, I'm going to put a 1 third. And so I'm going to look up here and say, OK, this is what I got for our tangent. A has got to be the square root of 2, because it's in this form. So I'm going to have 1 third times 1 over the square root of 2 tangent inverse of g, which is 3x, over a, which is the square root of 2, plus c. So my final answer is this. All right, let me back up. Let's say I have, let's say I have this. This is some ratio. So it means the tangent of y is equal to square root of 3 over the square root of 2. So that means I have a right triangle <coughs> where this is y, this is 3x, this is the square root of 2. This hypotenuse is going to be this squared plus this squared. 
the square root of that, correct? So it's going to be the square root of 2 plus 9x squared. So now if I take the derivative of this, I get secant squared y times the derivative of y is equal to 3 over the square root of 2. <clears throat> because this has a 1, right? So you're okay here. So that means dy over dx is equal to 3 over the square root of 2 times 1 over secant of y squared, correct? Well, what's the secant of y? It's this over this, correct? So the secant of y is hypotenuse over the square root of 2. So if I square this, I'm going to square this, which gives me y is equal to 2 plus 9x squared over 2. So that means dy over dx is equal to 3 square root of 2 times uh, 1 over, so it's going to be 2 over this. How are we supposed to know that? Why would you have a problem? How we're supposed to subdue the Well, okay, I'm going to tell you this. This is the type of problem that I'm concerned about. So if you have something like this, to be honest with you, this is the most common one they give you on the AP test. Do you see that it's not natural log? Because if it's natural log, I have to have a 2x up here. And so if I put parentheses around that, the derivative of x is 1. So the end answer to this is the tangent inverse of x plus c. And that's what I want you to be able to identify. So now if I had this, it's the same idea. But what's the difference is that this can be the tangent inverse of x over 2. Where the 2 come from, that's the square root of 4. because it's created from something in which you have x over 2 here, and this is 4 plus x squared. And we were supposed to know if to use the tangent place? Be like because one. every time you use tangent, it doesn't have a square root with it because you're squaring a ratio, you're squaring um, secant, and that eliminates the square root. Okay. It could be one over two. Pardon? Would it be a one over two? For this? Yeah. What's A equal to? Two? One. Well, for here, A is equal to two. Yeah, but. so there would be a no. Why would there be? Because it's 1 over a by the inverse 2 over a plus b. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's what you were telling me in yeah. our game clueless. Okay. So uh, these right here, 